meditation, you have told us uh, in the past, uh, has a uh, an important place in the happiness equation. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about why you, you think that is. Well, I started meditating eight years ago, not really knowing what it was. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So I, I started meditation eight years ago, not really knowing what it was or what I was getting myself into. Um, but I started off with just five minutes a day. Well, five minutes in the morning, and then I progressed up to doing five minutes in the evening as well. So 10 minutes in total. Um, and then I did that for a couple of months, and then I went straight into a 10-day silent uh, meditation called the Vipassana. And I did that in Cambodia. And there, wow, like my whole mind was blown because when you sit in silence, things come up that you didn't realize were still trapped in your body and your mind. And the silence allows the mind to bring up those things. And I recently, just the other day, last week I did another four-day silent meditation on my own because now I've done four or five ten-day silent meditations over eight years. And I do these shorter meditation days by myself that I create and I add in writing and processing and a lot of my own techniques now. But what I didn't know at the beginning of my eight-year journey is just how, if someone had described to me the things that I would feel and experience in meditation, I would be able to hear the words, but no way understand or truly comprehend what it actually is like. And the gifts have been immense because meditation, especially the type of meditation that I learned, which is the Vipassana meditation, sensation-based meditation, it teaches you how to respond to life. So it teaches you about how all our sensations are connected to emotions. So when we feel pleasant feeling, we get like a tingling, pleasant sensation on, on our body. And when we feel angry, we can feel tense and, you know, it can cause stomach issues. Like when you're about to, if you're nervous, you know, you can get that stomach feeling. And so it's sensations are related to emotions. And when you understand that, you understand that all sensations pass. Everything in the universe is in constant change. That's science, you know, everything is constantly changing. And so when you learn to observe that, it teaches you that emotions will come and go as well. And that means that it teaches you not to crave something and not to really hate something and feel that resistance to it because you know that things will pass. And um, and so that's been such a massive, massive gift. And the daily practice of that building up over the years has freed me from crippling addictions and eating disorders. And I am, and I am definitely, definitely happier. Sure, like I've always had this joy, sense of joy inside me, but with all the addictions in my past and the eating disorders, there was so much more time spent in that lower part of my emotions and and the, and the struggle, the struggle, the struggle. And so now I'm able to to keep up here most of the time. And if I ever do slip like something external happens in my life that is really shocking and hard and difficult I'm able to pull myself out of that very very quickly because I've learned to meditate and I have these tools and it just keeps getting richer and deeper and more magnetic and expansive and just so rewarding it is the number one thing I recommend to people and the number one thing I teach to my clients so, it's so interesting you say that. So when I was about 16, I had a fight with my brother. And I wanted to kill him. <laughs> my dad said, uh, instead, would you like to do a meditation? 
I say, yeah, and next thing you're going to tell me to do yoga also, right? <laughs> and I said, Dad, you need to grow up. <laughs> Nobody does meditation and yoga anymore. You're still living in the past. <laughs> and, and you know, these are like 5,000 year old practices in India. And uh, so three years ago, I had an ad in soon help me put an ad for uh, someone to help me with the research on uh, sustainability. And this girl applies for it, her name is Jennifer, and she's actually the one who helps with our meditations and our app, you know. So I, I was fascinated that she had gone to Haridwar where Beatles had gone in the 60s to learn uh, meditation as part of the music training. And that's where she spent three years and came back and teaches yoga and meditation now. But the, the, the point is that, that it, it came out of such an old tradition where uh, yoga, breathing, and meditation, and on top of that, you mentioned uh, eating disorders, nutrition. You know, these are like the fundamentals of life, you know, we deal with it in our app. I mean, our app deals with mind, body, and life, which is essentially those elements. So, I mean, mind is dealing with uh, how to control your uh, emotions, you know, where is coding it, what you deal with, how do you deal with it. So that's interesting how you, you connect it all together and how old-fashioned this concept is. <laughs> Honey, uh, if I if I may, you you, you talked about uh, you know four day silent retreats uh, in, in in the in the meditation leagues. I would suspect that that's probably pretty close to professional level meditation. How does uh, an average person get started with meditation? What what are the tools that you need? Uh, talk us through how you would uh, instruct one of your clients. How to get started with meditation? Yeah, I I am um, I always start someone that's completely new to meditation. I always start them off with the easiest thing that they can do. So everyone has four minutes to spare. People are like, well, yeah, I can't really say no to four minutes a day. So I start them off with a guided meditation that I make. I have these recordings. Um, sometimes I'll make it specific to the client, but I do have general ones. If anyone wants one, just reach out to me. Or I can put it on the app. Um, and it's just so to build that daily habit is really important. So if you start off with just four minutes a day and you commit to it, then over time, you start to think, okay, this is something that I do every day. And then you start to think, well, if it's something I, I meditate every, if it's something I do every day, I meditate every day, therefore I must be a meditator. So then it changes your identity. So when you change your identity, that is the, like, the pinnacle of change. Because someone could be defining themselves as an addict, for example, or someone that can't get themselves together can't or someone that and like when you this is the same if you want to start a running like um habit so you just start with the simplest thing i would start someone off who really is resistant with just putting on their trainers every day this is what the carl Dougie um coined in his book uh the power of habit um so i would start them off just very 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 simply and then you just build on that over time so Connie and Dave has this new concept of um, claiming, we actually claim in our app that we can bring you joy in less than a minute. So years ago, now this is someone who was trained by Susan Braden's wife, who trained me and taught me this uh, Breathing meditation. We in the US call it universal breathing meditation. So it's four minutes in, four seconds, for seven seconds, four seconds in, hold for seven seconds, breathe out for eight seconds. 
So it's 19 second universal meditation we call it, which, but it really is focusing on your breathing. So by focusing on your breathing, because you're counting, you lose the world and all of a sudden you're meditating by focusing on meeting it on, on, on uh, uh, seconds is really the concept behind it. So it's like, hey Susan, so it's a 19 second uh, uh, breathing meditation, universal breathing meditation, and you can actually do it three times in a minute. <laughs> And I think what you mentioned about uh, breaking the inertia, you know, getting people to take those baby steps towards forming a, a, a healthy habit, that's a lot of what the app is about. Um, designing activities that, are, you know, that start off very easy and they're really just about breaking that inertia and putting the power um, back into somebody's hands that, you know, happiness is possible. And it requires sort of simple changes plus repetition um, to get big, big results. Yeah, I mean, it's possible if someone was to just start off with one minute a day, and that's what we can do on the app. You can just do a one minute meditation. If someone commits to that, everyone has one minute. <laughs> there is no excuse. Well, that's what Dave's thinking was that people always say, well, I don't have time for this, you know. Well, I'm not feeling good, and I'm really feeling very sad and depressed and bad, but uh, how about give me four minutes? I don't have four minutes. How about one minute? <laughs> so the, the, whether it's one minute or four minutes, I think the notion of, of building a habit, making uh, whatever you're going to do uh, yeah. to make your life better a habit is very important, but I'm still kind of stuck. She's the meditator. I'm not. So, <laughs> for, the, no, for 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 meditation, when you say the word, I have a whole bunch of different pictures that you know, pop up in my mind. You know, sitting cross-legged in a robe, saying, "Oh, have, have you ever done meditation?" Oh, man, so, no. My my point is real quick: is is that that uh, saying you want to meditate is great. Do it a minute. What is it you do? What are the tools? What what are the things? that one does to fall into this category of <laughs> meditation is just about calming the mind basically that's sort of step one so it's, it's about becoming in the present moment and becoming aware and so like uh, like you say like professor joy um says about how it's just about um centering the mind and um i've lost my train of thought here. <laughs> so, so what do you do to, what do you do to center your mind what are some of the oh uh, yeah yeah so it's so that's, that's what i was going to say it's about um so about the breathing for example that is about focusing on the present moment so it's so there's many techniques that do that but breath breathing is one of the number one things really um, and Vipassana meditation actually starts you off with breathing. Um, but yeah, it's just about centering the mind in the present moment and then seeing what happens, uh, bringing yourself back to the present moment. It's not necessarily like people think, oh, what do you not think? No, that's not necessarily it. Like maybe for someone who's a monk, like a very, very advanced meditator, but you don't need to do that. You don't need to go into a place where you lose all sense of self and become just shaking the vibrations, which I have done and it's amazing, but it's not necessary of someone who's just starting out or ne ne it might not even happen for someone for many years or at all. Yeah. Um, meditation still brings massive, massive gifts just by becoming aware of yourself. You're still thinking, but the, the amazing thing about meditation is you see the layers of your thoughts. So you see, like, you see how you can watch your thoughts. There's kind of an observer of your thoughts, which is, which you which you can really only understand properly when you experience meditation. So it's, it doesn't, all of, all of this, what I'm saying now, 
isn't so necessary for someone to understand. Um, it's just ne necessary for them to understand to take the first step, to just sit and focus the mind and then things will happen. But I promise you it's a wonderful journey and it will bring you a lot of joy. And so, so, so yeah, you, you, let's ask Susan, what do you think? I want to hear Susan. Well, um, I think meditation is an incredible, um, an incredible experience. I think it's an experiential uh, practice. It's a practice. Um, I'm always interested in how people want to sell meditation and how to sell mindfulness and how to sell joy because, it's a, because people have to want to reach out for it. This is what I've talked about. Before they have to want to reach get to that point where they'll say, "Okay, I'll sit down for a minute." Like I have a friend who doesn't want to sit down and hear her mind for a minute. <laughs> it's, very, it's, very, it's very frightening to a lot of people. So for me, um, I'm going to the school and I'm going to be doing a mindfulness program. I was wondering how what you were going to do. I'm talking to see, I'm talking to a lot of people about what to do. And one of the things I purchased was I haven't really looked for it. It's called the Ultimate Mindfulness Activity Book. Because I'm looking at third graders with ADD and ADHD. So even having them, having telling them for five minutes on a Zoom class, okay, let's sit down and practice our breathing for a minute. I don't think any of them can do that. So I'm looking for ways of how to engage them in a practice of, how to engage them in a practice of something that they can learn how to calm themselves and go after their mind. And um, the thing that, there's two things that have come out to me as one is a practice of gratitude. Like I've been hearing that uh, uh, several people talk about, like I'm going to get my students a gratitude bag and I'm going to have them decorate their gratitude bag and I'm going to have their whole families participate in once a day putting something that they're grateful for in their gratitude bag. Wow. So that they learn how to focus on just how to do that. They... Like, even if I can have my kids learn how to do a 10-minute day, and then I'm going to have them paint some rocks. This friend of mine's an artist, and she has paints painting rocks. And I'm having them do these rocks so that they can say, I love you or love, and then give them away to people like random acts of kindness. And I want to teach the children how to, what it feels like to kind of step outside. I don't know how, and... I have a I have a plan on this, but it is difficult. Like because I think we're all children. You know, everybody goes like, I'm doing this thing. I mean, you know, I'm totally insane. I'm totally insane. I work on the body all the time in all different ways. And like I was reading this thing on breathing, and like I'm big on the nose, and I'm using the diaphragm and the nose. Like that's like that's one of my things I make. There's no compromise for me on it. So there's like this whole there's this thing now you can do where you can put pay, uh, tape on your mouth. Have you ever heard of that? Anyway, so I decide, and you do it when you sleep. Listen, it's wonderful. And you do it when you sleep. And it makes you say, I can't get him to do it. He's a chicken. <laughs> but it's it. And how do I get somebody to try it? There's all kinds of things. Because breathing through the nose affects the diaphragm. It affects your body's ability. It does all these wonderful things for you. And so I, so I decide to do it during the day and to walk around during the day with tape on my mouth. And what I found was it made me aware of how my brain was talking to itself. Ah. So something as simple as taking paper tape and putting it on your mouth and not changing anything can change how you see the world. If you're willing to try that. Now, listen, so when he's willing to try it, so I, I challenge you guys to get some paper tape or a band-aid to put a little tape on your mouth for a couple of hours a day and see what happens. I mean, those are things that I think are possible figure out how to do that because then people when they're opened up it opens their brain to another way to look at their the brain to look at itself. I think that's the issue is some brains have a very difficult time figuring out, you know, like they will you're on this path and the brain goes stay on this path and how do I get off this path? Yeah. Um well that's for more people for who um naturally like walk around with with their mouth open or they sleep with their mouth open. That's so to train people. So if you naturally don't do that, that's not more, that's not as necessary. But I would like to just say the difference between mindfulness and meditation. So I actually wrote a post before um, on Instagram a, lot, a while, long time ago. I put um, 
mindfulness is the awareness of the present moment. You you are likely to be doing anything, um, but you are actually completely focused on doing that thing. Like I am washing up, I am brushing my teeth, etc. And meditation is that, but in a more focused, deeper way, where you're solely f- focused on being. Both mindfulness and meditation overlap. But meditation is more likely to elevate you to a higher vibration. You're more likely to have um, to have set aside time and allow yourself to dissolve without doing. So meditation is a practice, and mindfulness is a way of life, living with awareness and living with awareness. Meditation leads, uh, sorry, meditation leads to mindfulness, and vice versa. Um, no, no, sorry, meditation leads to mindfulness. You don't have to meditate to be mindful, but if you meditate, you become mindful. Yes, yes. Meditation, and meditation is a, a route to mindfulness. It's a path to mindfulness. I, I'm just looking at how to get people into the path of, if joy score is this way, how to get people to a place where they're willing to meditate where they're willing to start looking at the advantages of meditation. Because to take that step, we're trying to appeal, and Joyce will, I, I think, with what's happening, is they're trying to appeal to it, to give people a path that they can do, like, okay, I can start here. And so they can feel successful. Because the most important thing for people to keep doing something is to feel successful in what they're doing. So here is my question to all of you. Yeah. We heard about meditation, mindfulness, how does or how do these two elements connect with joy and or happiness? Because meditation centers the mind and makes you see the madness of the mind. So it makes you see that you don't need to be angry, you don't need to be upset, and that joy and happiness is totally accessible. Because you realize that it is within you at all times. You have access to it. And that's the same with the, with the um, meditation type NLP guided meditations I give people. And my perspective on meditation and mindfulness and the way they make people happy is it gives people resilience. And what I'm looking for when I'm working with the children is I'm looking for resilience. Because life is going to always be life. Life is going to happen. Life is going to have things. Life is going to be up and down. And teaching people how to come back to a place of happiness or of contentment or of peace in their lives, I think is really, um, whatever you do, is really part of what joy is about. You're trying to teach people to have to go back because life is not always going to be joyful. It's just not. It's like, it's, that's life. There's ups and downs. There's day and night. There's dark and, you know, there's dark and light. But to have the resilience to know inside yourself that you can come back to it is what I'm looking for. And so I think all of it is really important. All I'm trying to do is trying to figure out how to get to the first base, you know, how to get them to take a step, to take that step. Well, I don't think you can force anyone to to change. They have to actually want to do that. But luckily, meditation is becoming a much more popular thing. So I think people are hearing the benefits of it. And slowly this seeps into our consciousness. And that's why more people are willing to try. But the more we uh, people talk about the benefits and how it really does change people, like it really, really does make people happier. I think just the more people will be drawn to it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to go now because it's 7.30 here and I've got a coaching call coming up. Um, but, but before I go, um, so uh, just a few questions. I sent, um, because of the, you asked me for the feedback um, for the app, I sent that to someone, but David, do I need to send it to you? That'd be great, yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you mind, uh, have I got your email? I think I have. Well, I, I will not find it to yeah. so you. Okay. share it with you. Um, and, um, for, uh, yeah, so the, the last week's podcast, is that, is that up anywhere yet or is that still being edited? Yes. We have it up, we post it to YouTube. How does it do? Is it in, uh, 
we, we have the highlights of it in the app, but we can have the whole copy also set to it. Okay, great. And is this via, is this include, is this video as well, or was it just audio? It's video. It's video. <laughs> <laughs> I was about whether to wear your sweats next time, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, last week I had some burns on my face, like so. <laughs> we can, we can feel I I Meditate on that; you'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, Susan, I did some. Um, David, are you just gonna? Send that email to me as well. I will. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will send it to you afterwards. Okay, brilliant. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Do we so have I did a copy for next week, Brit? Um, we had a uh, the laundry list of uh, of okay. I, I think I think that it might uh, I I'd, I'd still like to get from her um, a little bit more discussion about some of the tools that you need to meditate. I mean. Yeah, they, there was no. We didn't discuss. Do you want to talk more about meditation? I, I would. I would like to get a little deeper into how she sure. uh, instructs people because we didn't talk about where to do it, how to do it, sure. the mantra thing. The, okay, we'll, we'll continue that. So I think I think we can go there. You know, I've done. I did a little bit of meditation with a with a Buddhist monk, me and my family, and it made me think to your question, uh, Susan, about how to get kids to do it because my kids were doing it. Um, and what his approach was, was to have them active for a minute, then calm for a minute, active for two minutes, then calm for two minutes, and, and, and eventually building that up to five minutes, because, you know, it's hard to get kids to sit down. I and then the that. other thing, yeah, and then the other thing he did was rather than just have them sit in complete silence, he had a wooden frog. And he would hit this wooden frog and it would send a very kind of, um, you know, resonant sound through the air. And he would have them just focus quietly and count the amount of times he hit the frog. And just by focusing on the counting, they were invariably emptying their mind and thinking of nothing else. So those two things he, he worked on. Okay, so he had to do active things for a minute, like jump up and down, move around. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I Get the city down. Yeah. I sit on and be calm for them. Yes. And and then you know, I think that might be a good way for a lot of people because I think that's a good idea. Telling people to sit down and clear their minds is really threatening to a lot of people. It doesn't and, matter. And, and Susan, and see if you can help them breathe in like four, seven, eight, breathe in for four, hold for seven, breathe out for eight. See if they can try it. Who ponder? Who ponder? These are children in the third grade. I have a PhD and ADHD. I know. <laughs> no, 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 but I like this being a very active for a minute. And, and I, I, I'm going, I have a, actually, I have them hold their thumbs. And the thumb, I practice a healing art called Jinchen and Jitsu. And the thumb is a huge oh, yeah. thing in the body. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And I have them pick, visualize themselves doing they something. Can, they can even put their thumb in their mouth and. The That's what they yeah, who was doing the breathing? Yeah. Was Connie. That was Connie, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I know I'm not doing that. Well, thank you all. Thank all right. Thank you. All right. See you next week. Okay. All right. Take care, you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.